London. A crime's committed here every two minutes. And at the core of the capital is the city, where cops are on the front line fighting a constant battle against crime. Someone's called the cops. A mass fight is erupting in the streets. A CCTV operator is watching every second unfold. A huge brawl has just spilled out of a bar. PCs Brockwell and Morris are en route. It's a heavy fight now, a unit from the area. Control radio's updates as they race through the streets. Someone stopped heading eastbound Cheapside. But it's too late. At least eight men are laying into each other in a frenzied fight, fists and feet flying. As they hear the sirens, they scatter. But not fast enough. The CCTV operator identifies one of the men involved. That's it, quite a funny case. The man's friend is protesting his innocence. Put your arm in your hands. Hey, listen to what they're saying. Listen to what they're saying. He claims it's them who are being attacked. And the suspect himself says that far from being one of the attackers, he was actually the victim. you a minute. I'll talk to you. There's another problem. Three more friends suddenly appear, clearly unhappy. I'll come and talk to you. Yes, you are. Well, I'll come and talk to you if you move away. No, move away and I'll come and talk to you. The cops are outnumbered. Right, go over there and I'll come and talk to you. Get away. They need backup now. I'll come and talk to you. Can you just stand over there and I'll come and talk to you? Without warning, the suspect kicks off and his friends join in. Even our cameraman comes under attack. Their call for backup is thankfully answered quickly. The suspect is overpowered. And his friend is put in cuffs. You don't like idiots. You don't like idiots. Oh my god. Well, you know I just said I'm talking to For fuck's sake, man. Can you please? I'm not even restraining. Can you stop this? The woman who lashed out at our cameraman is heading for the cells. But the main suspect isn't going to give up as easily. Bella, I've asked you nicely. Are you going to get up? Finally, he's in the van. But the cops' troubles aren't over. We're going to the station. No, you can't come with us. You make your own way there. We should escape the station. One of his friends is prepared to go to any lengths to stand by his mate. We just want to talk to you. You can't come in our vehicle because you haven't been arrested. No. No, if you want to come, mind out the way. That's my friend. Mind out the way. No. That's my friend. That's just what I'm trying to say. Mind out the way. That's what I'm trying to say. No. You're assaulting me right there. I'm not assaulting you. I'm moving you out the way of the vehicle. Look, we're going to Bishopsgate Police Station. If you want to make your own way there, you're quite welcome to. Just don't get run over. Police later established that the man's story was true. He was actually the victim. Entirely innocent, he was later released without charge. The cops who captured these suspects are part of the elite City of London Police. With a population of over 7 million, the capital is one of the most crime-ridden cities in Europe. And at its heart is the Square Mile, famous the world over as a financial district, 
with its glistening skyscrapers and tourist hotspots. But less well known for the criminal activity that occurs here. And for the brave officers of the City of London Police, battling to restore law and order to the streets. Superintendent David Wood is the boss of this manor, and his message to the bad guys is clear. If you're considering entering the City of London to commit crime, you're going to get caught. Our detection rate is one of the highest in the country. My teams are out there 24-7 looking out for people like you. You'd be best advised to take your custom elsewhere. I like to think of our approach as an iron fist in a velvet glove. If you come into the city with bad intentions, then the iron fist will come into play. Control has just received a 999 call. Two men, one allegedly armed with a knife, have forced their way into a flat. Inside are three women and a child. Rapid response cops Laura Aldridge and Linda Greenwood are already racing to the scene. You're right. Are you right, my darling? Yes, yes. Right, exactly. I'm coming out. I'm in it. Right, who are we looking for? It's all right. That's all right. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's nice. Pray for me. Pray for me, OK? The hysterical right. woman is so distraught, she can barely speak. But right now, she's the only witness the cops have. My brother had a, a, a fight with his girlfriend, okay. and now his girlfriend's brother's just come, like, blown into our house. OK. With a right. knife and taken away. It seems a family dispute has turned violent. Is your brother all right? Is everyone all right upstairs? Yeah, yeah. Who, was in your, who was in your flat at the time? My mum, my sister yeah, and my son. Nice and calm for me, yeah? What is this chap? Do you know his name, this bloke? No. No? no. What was he wearing? He's wearing a hoodie. What colour? Can you remember what colour it was? Um, Cops believe an armed man is now on the loose. Every detail is vital. So it was like a jumper, like a hooded jumper. Did he have jeans on? Or I trousers? Don't know. I don't know. Um, he's got dreadlocks. You he's can got see dreadlocks. His dreadlocks. How tall? Tall as me? Tall as Linda? Yeah, tall as, tall as you. Like. And how long ago did this happen? Like, ten minutes ago. Ten minutes Suddenly, ago. Suddenly, the woman's mobile phone rings. Uh, are you OK? I'm here. It's her sister. Police, are they back? Oh, quick, quick, quick! The suspects are in her flat. Officers are there in seconds. Can you stay with me, my darling? Yeah. 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 We're at the house now. Yeah. to update you. They cautiously walk up the steps to the front door, knowing the man could be behind it. But he's already done a runner. This is now a major incident. A specialist dog unit and more than a dozen cops have been sent to the area to assist the search. Suddenly, officers spot a man matching the description of the suspect. <laughs> Laura, could, could you ask the girl what this brother's name is, the one who's wearing the green jacket, please? Come on. But after checking his details, they quickly establish he's just an innocent passerby. Seconds later, control radios with an update. The suspect has fled the estate. The lady who initially reported this to us, who we saw outside, has said that her sister is at another address and she's screaming in the background. A squad car is already on its way. A man was later arrested and the sister was found safe and well. The city of London is flooded with hundreds of thousands of people every day. And mingling with those commuters and tourists are the city of London's elite crime squad. Okay, have you got an eyeball? Can you see them inside at all? Undercover cops, some of whom we can't identify. Their job is to blend in with the crowd and catch criminals in the act, from shoplifters to armed robbers. You'd never know they were there, unless, of course, you're being arrested by one of them. The crime squad are one of our most potent tools to fight crime within the city of London. If they're operating in plain clothes, they can get a lot closer and actually observe them committing the crime and then jump on them once the crime's been committed. Crime Squad PCs Dave Hughes and Mike Nunn are out on patrol. You're looking for people that really set a few alarm bells ringing, that they don't fit in too much in the city. It's a business community, so everyone is obviously quite smartly dressed. You will just see someone who doesn't quite 
look as they should or their behaviour might just be a bit unusual. And it's not long before they spot a man who they think might be shoplifting. They keep him under surveillance and follow him on foot as he goes into a shop. As he leaves, something in his bag triggers the shop alarm and he makes a run for it. Little does he know, undercover officers have been watching his every move. And now, they're just yards behind him. Desperate to get away, the man has ditched his bag. Hang on, mate, just calm down. I'll get you some help. He's jumped over some railings. Not realising the drop below. Yeah, male, uh, he's conscious and breathing, but he's probably fallen about 30 feet. Uh, so he's got leg injuries. Uh, but we're just going to go down and see, see the uh, extent of his injuries now. Crime squad officers immediately call for urgent medical assistance. <laughs> Definitely looks like leg injuries. He's fallen from quite some height. What are you thinking though, mate? All right, mate, it's, we're not gonna move you or anything now. 36 year old male, conscious and breathing, uh, appears to have a broken leg and uh, lower back injuries. There's a technical problem too. 30 feet below street level, surrounded by buildings, radio reception is poor. Sorry, CP, you broke with the last uh, comms are bad down where we are. Can you repeat? Life-threatening or life-changing, Sydney. Yeah, um, can't be said at this stage. Obviously, has got a broken leg. Don't know the extent, so possibly could be life-changing. Yes. What was going to be an arrest has now turned into a medical emergency. I think this has to be called a critical incident. The man yeah. is gravely injured, and all it seems for a bag full of electric toothbrush heads. Uh, we've stole one or two of toothbrushes. Uh, as soon as we went out the door, the alarm sounded, uh, and he was off. Oh, shit, it's quite a job. This man may have sustained spinal damage. Even worse, he could have internal bleeding. If you feel any different, just let us know, all right? I can't see through your genes that there's anything, you know, anything too bad. But I wouldn't try and roll over or anything, mate. I'll just stay where you are. Stay where you are on this side. Well, mate, don't move here. It's when the uh, ambulance crew come, they can deal with you then. If you want to stay so, you, so you're in the same position as when you landed. All the officers can do is try to make sure the man stays conscious. Bad decision, mate, that was. On the other side of the square mile, uniformed officers are responding to an entirely different kind of incident. We're just going to find a male that believes to be exposed yeah, himself. Proceed, uh, a member of the public's just dialed 999. She claims she's been flashed as she walked past a church. Oh. PC Steve Phoebe and Barry Jarvis are quickly on the scene. As they walk behind the church, they spot someone. Hi, sir. But this man's fully clothed. He says his father yeah, is having an operation in a nearby hospital. Yeah. Can I ask? Sorry, what, what have you been doing, sir, for the last uh, few I'll minutes? A few minutes, I'll just wait for my dad. My dad's in surgery. Right, OK, fine. So I just a gentleman fitting your description, sort of fairly Close closely. Account. Yeah. Um, wearing blue trousers, has been seen exposing himself. Exposing himself? Yes, that's what we've been, that's what we've been led to believe. <laughs> so we're just trying to find out. <laughs> have, you, have you been drinking at all? I've had a couple of beers, yes. Okay, so I can smell on your breath. You said, said you were drunk, you don't appear no, drunk. I'm not drunk, no, not so But I can smell you Okay. I've had a couple of beers. I take it, have you exposed yourself at all anyway, sir? Not at all. I told someone to fuck off, that's about it. Pardon my language, but I told them. The man appears to be agitated, and he's been drinking. Something's happened here, but the police aren't yet sure what. Yeah, basically, we're trying to contact the informant now, so uh, find out exactly what they've seen, what's gone on. So we're just waiting for a result back from that. OK, well, Barry takes the uh, details of the map. <coughs> what's your address? Uh, oh, I, I'm actually at no fixed abode, to tell the truth. OK. Just wait one second.
Now he has the man's name, PC Jarvis radios in his details to run a check on him. Yeah, sorry, just, just confirm, so from the information I gave you then. And get some vital information back. Seven is wanted, repeat. What began as a hunt for a suspected flasher is fast turning into something even more bizarre. The cops have been told there's already a warrant out for this man's arrest. Is on its way. Back at the serious accident, urgent medical assistance is thankfully en route. The suspect is gravely injured. First on the scene is a cycle paramedic. He needs the toes. Can you feel me touching here? He needs to make a quick assessment of how badly the man is hurt. It's painful where I'm pressing. Yeah. 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 Sorry, mate. Um, do you need any help, mate? He cuts off the man's clothes. It's the only way of examining his injuries without moving him. He's now having trouble breathing and needs oxygen. I don't know, mate, if he told you, he, he said obviously both legs and his lower back was where, where he had the pain. You wouldn't have seen the name, I didn't, mate, I was just, I was just behind. I couldn't, I couldn't believe, to be honest, that he actually did it. An ambulance has now also arrived, but there's a problem. With the extent of the man's injuries, it's not yet clear how medics are going to be able to get him up to street level. I think they've got like an enclosed pod sort of thing that they can take people up on, but that's all to do with like rope crews and all sorts. There's loads of like issues with that. A team of doctors is now also at the scene. But their stretcher won't provide enough support for the injured man. So they call in the fire service. The firemen have a rigid bodyboard which minimizes patient movement. The suspect is quickly strapped in. Getting him to the ambulance is an extremely difficult job, even for this experienced team. Finally, the man is back at street level. He needs to get to a hospital now. He definitely had a fractured leg, um, but something from that height is very likely to get um, a spinal injury as well. He was later found to have two broken legs, a broken arm, a broken pelvis, and spinal disc injuries. And he still might face charges of shoplifting. Across town, officers are questioning a man suspected of flashing at a passerby. But an already strange call-out has just become more sinister. Yeah, thank you. Just stop reference as well, please. No, he's got tattoos. He's got them then. Okay. I'm happy with that. A check on the police national computer reveals he's already wanted for another matter. The outstanding arrest warrant mentions several very distinctive tattoos. You got any um, tattoos? If it's the same man, He'll be nicked. One there, one on my shoulder. The ones you've probably got is one on my shoulder and one on my leg. What, what's, what, what's, have you got any, you got Yes, on my leg, yeah. Excellent, okay. All right, just do me a favor, just put it out for a second. Now he's verified the man's identity through the tattoos, it's time to make the arrest. The man is wanted for non-payment of a court fine. All right, just for your information, okay, I'm gonna arrest you. All right, whoa, whoa. take your hands out of your pocket for a second. You've been arrested, Imagine. you've got a warrant out for your arrest. So no, leave, leave it out for a second, fella. You've got a warrant for your arrest, non-payment of a fine, 65 pound in a taxi, we believed, or from a restaurant, all right? You don't have to say anything. It may harm your defence you want to mention when questioned, something you're lying in call, anything you just have to be given evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah, I do. I think right. it's a little bit of a Well, this information we received on our control. Keep your hands out of your pockets for a second. That's fine, mate. This is what we received from our radio, yeah? You're going to be booked in, that's just going to do a cursory search for you, okay. all right? So cool, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, man so has fine. been taking his hands in and out of his pockets, and P.T. Jarvis is suspicious. He 
He's found something. What's in there? Spade. Okay. Not only is the man wanted, he's just admitted possession of speed or amphetamines. Yeah. So it's just a drugs bag if you got it. That's perfect. The drugs are bagged and taken away for testing. And as the man realizes how this is all going to end, he starts to lose his cool. Well, that's what we have got. That's My what, fucking father is yeah, under that's, a knife yeah, that's what, uh, I've cried five fucking yeah, times today. You're right. taking the piss out of me. That's what we want to get fuck. you moving as soon as possible. Fuck, let's, let's get a move on it. Let's get yeah, out of town before you, I start getting mugged. Because right. oh. I don't want to do that. Go on, fucking put them on now. Alright. Fucking I'll swear. Serious? I ain't got to be rough, mate. I ain't got to be rough, am I? You're going to do it a little bit. You know what I mean? I ain't going nowhere, am I? Fuck, I ain't been caught up, mate. I ain't fucking killed that one. Fuck yeah, 3-1. Cousin, what's all that about? My fucking father, you can't, you're talking about my fucking father. Basically, um, we've done some PNC checks on him, and uh, unfortunately, he's wanted on warrant. It was a no bail warrant, so he's left us with no choice to uh, arrest him. The cops later established he hadn't exposed himself, but he was cautioned for a public order offence and done for possession of Class A drugs. In the city, undercover crime squad officers are back out on the streets. They're now tailing two women suspected of shoplifting who've gone into a branch of Next. The covert cops have uniformed backup, waiting in a squad car around the corner. And possibly the second one does match. Basically, as soon as this truck comes through, diagonally straight ahead, there's a... Well, he's backing up now, but there's a green vehicle, which is an unmarked police vehicle with two officers in it. Four plainclothes officers gone into next. They've gone in to follow them. I think they may suspect that they're doing some more stealing in the shop. So they're waiting until they actually exit the premises with more stolen goods. And there's like four plainclothes officers surrounding the shop. I'm just trying to keep out of visibility. If they get to a doorway, see us, and then just drop their stuff and walk out, as you don't tend to catch them. After a 10 minute wait, they get the call that the women have left the shop. It's time to move in. The two suspects have no idea they're being watched by the crime squad. The undercover cops fade back into the crowd and let their uniformed colleagues take over. Can just like, just stop us for a second, please? Stop. He's still alright, then. We don't need to do the CCTV. Just wait, guys, police officer. Just want a word of you here. Three, two, you go ahead. Okay, can you just hang up on the phone for a bit? Okay. It's about a report of shoplifting just down the road. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. There's a shop down the road. They've just put up a description of you, Me. of you and your colleague. Doing what? Stealing from the store. I okay. You've been positively identified I by the shop. Anything. Okay. I'll explain it to you. You've been positively identified as stealing goods from the shop. For those reasons, we're going to be searching under Section One of Pace. Okay. I won't be doing it, but I'll get a female to do it in a second. Okay. In the meantime, if you can give my colleague all your details. So you are. If you just put your bag down on the side for us, please. Their bags are searched for any stolen items. And a female officer gives both women a body search. See if she's got anything stolen from the premises that recorded it earlier. The women have a number of empty branded carrier bags in their possession, but no stolen goods. But then they make a significant discovery. One woman has two pairs of pliers in her handbag. In a process known as de-tagging, pliers are often used by shoplifters to cut off security tags. These two items have been found in your bag, which you've got no, no reasonable excuse to have as far as I'm concerned. Well, I used them for my car, so it is an excuse. All right, well, fair enough, you can say that in custody, can't you? But at this stage, there's been allegations of theft in a shop where de-tagging's going on, and that's what you've got with you. So going equipped is the offence I'm arresting you for at this stage, unless it further comes to light. The time is now one o'clock, you don't have to say The woman continues to protest her innocence. She says the pliers have nothing to do with shoplifting. But both women are arrested. The reason she was arrested for going equipped is because she's got two very sharp cutters that were concealed in her bag that she's obviously been using to cut the tags off things that she steals. One of the suspects was later cautioned for theft and going equipped. The other was released without charge. Night falls over London. 
The evening exodus of office workers and tourists comes to an end. Darkness takes a grip of the city. And cops starting their night shift have just received a call every policeman dreads. Officer needs assistance. A drunken man has allegedly started a fight in a nightclub. It took four bouncers just to get him out of the bar and into the street. But he's still fighting, this time with the cops. These two officers are hoping backup arrives quickly. And it does. No, who's back over there now? No, he's ringing, sir. Who's back, fella? Excuse me. Can you get his other arm out? And between them, the city cops finally managed to restrain him. Alright, sir, so you're under arrest for being drunk and disorderly. You do not have to say anything, but they hold your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Now he's in cuffs. He seems to have no choice but to go quietly. Here you go, mate. But this man just won't give up. He's not going anywhere without a fight. Even his friends are pleading with him to comply with the cops. The suspect can struggle all he likes. This is only going to end one way. Basically, got a male who's been acting silly on the dance floor. Bouncers have tried to make him leave. He's refused to leave. Um, it's taken four bouncers to get him out of the club. When we've approached him, he's been kicking off with us. He's tried fighting with us. We've uh, had to restrain him, put him into cuffs. He's been arrested for drunk and disorderly. But no sooner have they shut the van door when they get radioed about another fight outside the same nightclub. Over on the other side of the square mile, all seems to be quiet. Until a CCTV camera zeroes in on something unusual. A group of people get out of a car and head towards a building. It looks like they're breaking in. A CCTV operator quickly guides a nearby foot patrol to the scene. Officers are immediately suspicious. They don't know who is inside or what they're doing. Well, so There's been a report that six males have got out of a smart car. I don't know how six got into a smart car and um, have managed to break into this building. It's a bit of a building site, but there are um, a lot of burglaries involving metal thefts, that sort of thing. The premises are actually derelict and construction works in progress. So it's not just the suspects who could be dangerous. The building could be torn. We've, uh, we've got a dog van on the way down that's going to go in and search premises. It's just a matter of containing the, uh, the area until they arrive. With the site now locked down by the cops, the dog squad is brought in. The handler looks for the best way inside before starting a search with his specially trained tracker dog. Outside, the officers start to examine the car they believe the suspects arrived in. Yeah, can I have an unattended vehicle check, please? While the dog tries to pick up a scent, the police have no choice but to wait it out. They don't know who's in there, what they're doing, or even if they're armed. All they can do is keep the perimeter secure. Most of the doors have got padlocks on on the outside, so uh, bar this one and maybe this gate. Uh, they don't know they can get out, so I'm just going to wait here. 
The cops might not know exactly where the intruders are, but they do know they're not going anywhere. For now. Half a mile away, back at the nightclub, police have already arrested one drunken troublemaker. Only to be called back to the same bar to deal with another drinker who has been kicked out. He's not happy, and just like the first guy, his friends can't resist getting involved. With a big crowd now out on the street, the cops know they have to get control of the situation and fast. This is all his mates, and they're all having a crack at the door staff now, basically downstairs, kicking off about him getting because kicked out. They know they're trying to kick, they're trying to eject some more. Uh, they just want him out there, they. I think so. PC Charles Cunningham goes to check if all the troublemakers are now out of the bar. It seems all the men have now been ejected from the club, and on seeing the cops everywhere, they decide to start behaving themselves. One more foot wrong, and they could be heading for the cells. Back at the derelict building, a tracker dog is still inside hunting for suspected intruders. Outside, the cops have formed a cordon around the entire site. It's pitch black. They can't see anything. But suddenly, one of them hears something. The noise is three people trying to get out through some fencing. The officers want an explanation as to what the men were doing and the whereabouts of the others. Yeah, they've all followed each other in. Uh, is what they're saying. The other three guys are still outstanding, apparently are still in there. Um, and that's all we know so far. Where are your mates in, guys? These experienced City of London cops have heard it all before. What are we doing in there? Or at least they thought they had. Well, you're all on the same photography comes along. Yeah. And this is the norm, is it? Creeping into quiet places, dark places and taking pictures. They're claiming they're from a photography club. The rest of their mates have just been spotted and stopped by the cops. One of them has keys to the car the police checked in. They've got a lot of equipment, climbing gear, uh, breathing apparatus, etc., which could assist them in the process of uh, going through the building and stealing. The items in the car arouse even more suspicion. The cops think there is more to this photo shoot than the suspects are letting on. What's the purpose of you taking pictures inside there? The hobby. Elaborate. Um, I don't understand. I'm a semi-professional photographer. Um, I'm at uni doing photography. Mm -hmm. It's basically my life. Um, and one of the things we do is take pictures of abandoned buildings. Yeah, 392, go ahead. The officers aren't happy with any of the stories they've been told. Listen carefully, chaps, all right? So everyone's going to be nicked. Right. All three of you are under arrest on suspicion of burglary in here, right? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention one question, something which you will are in court. Whatever you say now, may be given in evidence. You understand that, Gordon? Yeah. Is, is, is that OK, let's go. Basically, that was found inside. Uh, they've given a reason why they were, but obviously we can't prove that at the moment, so they've been arrested on suspicion of burglary. Uh, and once they've been interviewed, they can give their reasons uh, under caution. It turns out they were all telling the truth. They were just amateur photographers on a rather odd night out. And they were all released without charge. Control has just received a 999 call. At the other end of the line, a woman screaming. A City of London rapid response squad is en route in seconds. The cops race to the woman's location. Hello? 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 As they Hello? approach the address, they can Hello? hear a woman screaming. Yes? Open the door! Open the door! 
Open the door now, please! A backup squad has also been dispatched. Uh, they heard screaming, but the, the line was cut off, so we don't know what's going on, but we have a unit already on scene. And that unit can't wait a second longer. Open the door now! But as they prepare to force their way in, the door suddenly opens. Right, you... Right. You stand over here. Stand over here. Inside, they separate a couple who appear to have been fighting. They quickly get the alleged victim out of the building. And put the man in handcuffs. Right. Okay, do you understand why you're going to be arrested? No, I don't. Okay, let me explain it to you. At this stage, you're arrested on suspicion of assault. We've had a report of a male beating a woman at these premises. Okay. The woman claims that following an argument, she was pushed down a flight of stairs. So anyway, he's really peeved with me because I came back a couple of hours late. Mm. And the exterior is just out of his mind. Your bit works out, the woman's screaming. Yeah, well, she left me locked out of my for three hours. He's just... And then what am I going to do? Push me down a flight of stairs. It's a serious allegation, which the suspect immediately denies. No, I didn't pull it down the stairs. I grabbed the leg. That's what you're saying. All right, all right. Obviously, this officer's arrested you for that. All right, all right. So we're going to take you to the police station now. Could I just talk to? If I talk to, would you release me? No, you're not speaking to her. No. The man pleads with the officers to let him speak to the woman, but it's too late for that. Yeah, I've got the keys. We'll lock the door. The only talking this man's going to be doing is down at the station, in an interview room. Domestic assaults are a top priority for city cops. If found guilty, this man could go to prison. He'll go back now, he'll be interviewed uh, under caution on tape. We'll get his side of the story. We'll take a victim statement from the lady and uh, investigation begins. On the streets, response squad cop Giles Cunningham has pulled over a man after spotting him driving dangerously. The reason we stopped you, yeah. you pulled an illegal UE up on Wood Street, didn't you? Illegal UE? Yeah, you turn. Oh, Tom Tom telling me to go there and there. But this is fast turning into yeah, more than just a routine traffic stop. PC forward. Cunningham's had a whiff no, of something. I can't remember telling you. You've been smoking any drugs in that car, chap? Because. No. No, I don't smoke, mate. I don't want to be You sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure about that. Very understandable. There's a smell of something in the vehicle. PC Cunningham decides to check again. The smell's still there. I think there's a vague smell of cannabis in there. The chap in the back seat's lit up a regular cigarette. I suspect to mask the smell. This stop has now turned into something more serious. Other officers arrive to search the passengers in the car. And a specialist sniffer dog is called in to go through the vehicle. This canine cop is one of five dogs working round the clock to assist City of London Police. The Springer Spaniel is trained to detect the minutest traces of drugs. If there are any in the car, he will find them. At the moment, um, when we pulled the car over, um, I could smell a strong smell of cannabis in the vehicle. And because of that, um, we've put a, uh, a drug dog into the vehicle um, to detect any legal substances, basically. But despite a thorough search of the vehicle, no drugs are found. And if there aren't any in the car, the cop who first smelt a rat is sure they must be hidden somewhere on the bend. We don't lose money on you. So they keep up the pressure on the driver. What did you do for a living, mate? Until, to the officer's surprise, he produces a small package from somewhere they hadn't looked. His mouth. <laughs> and it looks like cannabis. City of London cops issue written warnings to first-time cannabis offenders. 
And that's what's going to happen to this man. A record made in the interstate. Caught a second time, and it will mean an on-the-spot fine. I need you to sign there, please, and then uh, print your name next to it, please. Third time, and you may not be so lucky.